Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at the grid fill function. So let's start with this default cube, we're going to have a look at what grid fill actually does, and then we're going to have a look at why it can be so useful in certain workflows. So I'm going to come into edge mode here, I'm going to press Ctrl and E, and I'm going to subdivide this edge, and I'm just going to press Shift and R to repeat that one more time. And let's go to vertex mode, and all I'm going to do is just delete this vertex. And so now we've got a non-manifold object, and this is obviously a problem in Blender, especially for 3D printing, but also for doing things like booleaning objects together. It doesn't like non-manifold objects. We can obviously fix this just by pressing Alt, selecting those edges there, and if I press F, it's going to fill that in. So now our object is manifold. But it's not following on the geometry that we've got here. It's not keeping this as quads. We can see here that this has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight vertices that's part of it. And this can cause problems in other ways. We'll have a look at some of those later. So what I'm gonna do is press Control and Z to undo that. And instead, if you press Control and F, or you come to the face menu up here, and you can see it's just there for grid fill. I'm gonna do it the Control and F way and grid fill you can see that this will attempt to fill this as a grid. And it might be that we need to fiddle with some of the options here to change the span, which is the amount of lines or vertices that are being created, and we can change the offset here. So for example, that's not what we want. If we offset it one that way, that's gonna be correct. And now we've got not only a manifold object like we did earlier, but it's also gonna have the same flow of quads, which is gonna be very useful. Now what gets better than this is that grid fill is also quite good at interpreting. So if I press shift and A and I'm going to bring it in a quad sphere, if you don't have a quad sphere it's because I've got machine tools, it's a free add-on, I strongly recommend you get it, it's really really good. And if we come into here and go into vertex mode we can see we've got all of these vertices. And If I just select some, let's say those vertices there and delete them and do the same thing again. So I'm going to alt click here, control and F and grid fill. Again, we will have to fiddle with some of the options. Bring that one down, there we go. So you'll notice that if you've got something with edges here, it's often best to do something, for example, if this has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven vertices, you generally want to have the span slightly under that. I will show you another solution to this in a second. But you will notice that actually, if we come into our side view here, or just pan around, you'll notice that Blender's made a very good effort at interpreting this sphere and placing our mesh or the grid in the correct location. Now, if I just come into front mode and shift and Z, you will notice this is pretty good, but it's not perfect. You can see that these vertices are slightly offset from the ones that are behind that we can see in the X-ray. So like I said, it's not perfect, but it's a very good interpretation and a very good attempt at fixing this geometry. If it was necessary to have the geometry perfectly symmetrical, we could always align those vertices after we've done the grid fill. So let's have a quick look at an example of why this is such a useful function to be able to have. So I'm just gonna press Shift and A and I'm gonna bring in another cube, move it over here, just gonna enlarge it slightly, and we're gonna have a look at this if we're following a sub D workflow. So what I'm gonna do is come into edge mode and I'm just going to control and R and I'm just gonna bevel that so that we can control some of our edges. In fact, actually, let me just show what I'm doing. So if I add a modifier and a subdivision surface and I put that up to, let's say three, you'll notice that at the moment it's turning into a sphere because all of these edges are getting subdivided. If you're not very familiar with the subdivision surface workflow, then there's a link in the top right hand corner in the description where I go through a beginner example of this and spend a bit more time talking about it. But all I'm gonna do is bring in an edge loop here and then Control and B to bevel that out. And I'm gonna do this on each of the edges. So now we've got this nice flow here and we can see these controlling edge loops have given this nice bevel around these different corners. So now let's take this a little bit further. Let's say we want to take a cube. So control and A and bring in a cube. Obviously I could have used something like box cutters to do this. I'm gonna move this here. I'm gonna scale this up to something like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna Boolean this cube out of this one. So I'm going to control and minus. I'm just using ball tools and then let's hide that. Now I'm just gonna go into these edges and just make them a little bit less extreme. So GG and move that one along there and then 
GG and then GG so that we're sliding them and now we've got this bevel which is a little bit more rounded here and here but we've got the boolean actually not having a bevel to it before anyone says anything in the comments don't get me wrong I appreciate that if we we're just doing this in this shape it would be much easier to do this by adding a bevel modifier I'm just using this as a quick example to show what if this was something we couldn't use a bevel modifier what if it was a more complex shape but just for speed I thought this was an easier way of doing this well there's an easy way of fixing this what we could do is just bring if I want these edges to be beveled I could bring the boolean up here but now everything goes very, very wrong. This is definitely not what I wanted. I wanted a nice bevel on these edges here, 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 and here, and a bevel here, possibly being even different. So how am I gonna achieve that? So the answer is actually with the grid fill, and I will talk about a different way of doing grid fill here because we're gonna see a problem with it. So if I go into edge mode here, in fact, actually, to do this, we do have to be slightly destructive in this instance, so we are going to have to apply this. And if I turn off this in my real-time display and go into vertex mode, you can see what this has done is it's cut out and made these two faces from the boolean. And the problem is that these aren't quads. Again, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine vertices here, and Blender doesn't like that. It does subdivision surface by working with quads. So we need to fix this problem. So the easiest way to do this is if I just come into this edge and delete it. Now, before we go into this actually any further, I should say we could go about this solving this a different way. I could come to this point, shift click that point, click J and it's gonna join it. And then I could do this for every single one of these points, but that's going to be a pain. I don't want to have to do that. So let's fix it another way. So edge, delete that edge. Now. What would be nice, but Blender gets a bit confused, is if I could just select all of this and once again do grid fill. But the problem here is that it tries to do, well, a lot of attempts at working out what it's doing. And even if I do this offset, it actually gets okay at doing this. And actually, we can get that pretty perfect. So with some fiddling around with the grid fill, we can sort this out. But there is a quicker way of doing it. So notice what we're trying to achieve is this. It has worked out where all the grid's going. And it's actually followed the flow of each of these sets of quads. Now, obviously, I had to fiddle around with the grid fill here. And having had a bit of practice with grid fill, I know how to do this and what to fiddle with. But if I just undo this all... The easy way to do it is if I just select one set of edges and then shift click and do the opposite set of edges. So notice if we think of it like a cube, almost ignore that there's this bend in it. I've got one line of the hole here and the other line here that are facing each other. And if at this point I press control and F and grid fill, it will do it right first time. I haven't had to fiddle around with anything. So we don't actually have to select the entirety of the outside edge for grid fill to work. And at this point, this is gonna work quite well. We just need to reestablish some of the quads here. So if I come into side view and just press K to bring in knife modes, click on this vertex and I want Z and then C for cut through, click and then enter. And then I'm gonna do the same thing again, K and then I want Y to go along the axis, C for cut through, click and enter. You can see now that we've re-established all of these quads. And if I bring that back in, we've got a much nicer flow. And that means that now our subdivision surface functions correctly. And if I want to, I can even control an R, bring in an edge loop here and control R and bring in an edge loop here. So I can control the bevel on this point. So grid fill is really good for this subdivision surface workflow as it allows you to bring back in the quads that you might be missing by otherwise doing a fill function. As always, if you found this useful, please do press the like button. It really helps disseminate the video so other people see it.